We need business leaders, not excuses. So listen, learn, and go do it. This is the Biz Tools Podcast. Now, just two guys, a girl, and a lot of caffeine. It's David Specht, Sean Green, and Molly Corbett. Terrifying right now. <laughs> Don't be alarmed, children. Uh, well, hopefully we won't get the explicit moniker this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. No, this is the Biz Tools <laughs> Podcast. I'm David Specht, one of your hosts. Across the table is Sean Green. Hi. And to the right, never to be left in the corner, Molly Corbett. Hello. It, more, how do we say? Hello, malls. Hey, malls. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, malls. And we're your hosts for the Biz Tools podcast. What do we do here, Sean? Oh, uh, we say we talk about <laughs> business subjects, leadership lessons, etc. And really, we just kind of ramble, and then a lesson pops out somewhere. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yep. Just like the little thing on the turkey baster and thingy. <laughs> the little <laughs> the thermometer. <laughs> it just kind of hangs out, and then yeah. all of a sudden, pop. We're done. All right. Molly's so checked out right now. Yeah, she is. She's like all in her phone and stuff. I am totally Instagramming. Oh. Oh, Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And we want you to be a part of the podcast, and you can do that easily by either commenting in the comment section of the show notes at... Uh, www.thebiztools.com slash the podcast. You can get us on the Twitter and on the Facebook Facebook. and all kinds of other places. Also, you can email us at ask at thebiztools.com with any questions, and we would be happy to answer them. Maybe. Maybe. Depending on how nice you are. Okay. What are we talking about this week? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Epic fails. Yeah. Epic fail. One of the one of my favorite searches on Google, by the way, is epic fails. <laughs> I love fail blog. Yeah, fail blog's awesome. Yeah. But that's minutes. not what we're talking about. We're talking oh. about when things don't work out. You think you got a good idea. Oh, by the way, hi, YouTube. Yeah, we're on YouTube. We're now. on YouTube. We're also on YouTube. What's on YouTube, our, yeah. What's what the you, heck? What's our YouTube channel? Biz. The Biz Tools, I think. Okay. All right. We'll go with that. If not, it'll be in the show notes correctly. <laughs> um... The good things about recording things, you can go back and fix it. Oh, no. Nice. But let's talk about let's talk about when we like miss the mark, like everything. So this podcast, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was I, ma- that I, was I was inspired by. Um, I think it was two weeks ago mm-hmm. on the podcast. Molly talked about her uh, perfectionism. Yes. And how. When she was taking pictures of one of her graduating classes, that oh, she yeah. totally missed the mark because of perfectionism. Yeah. And and I thought about it, and I'm like, well, what do you do to recover from that? You know, because invariably <laughs> in business, stick out alone. <laughs> if, oh Lord, yeah, hello, <laughs> therapy, please. Actually, that's funny you should say that, but it was it was really good therapy that got me through that. You have to know your value. That was what my problem was. Mm-hmm. I didn't know the value up front. But when you're failing in business, and and all of us have missed the mark, all of us have promised and didn't deliver, or what we delivered was not what the customer expected, or you know maybe the wheels just fell off uh, of something. Uh, what what can you do to fix that? What you know? What are some of the you know? I always think of failure as a li- as a lesson giver, right? And, and and to treat it as such. But sometimes you know failure is like hitting you in the stomach. Um, we've had several. What we would consider great ideas around here, but when we went to implement them, mm. the the market didn't care. Yeah, we tried to sell it. We tried to to you know to put it out there. We tried to draw interest to it, and you know we got silence. And we put a lot of effort and a lot of resources into some things. And um, you know I used this term before. Sometimes you're ahead of the curve, but ahead of the curve still striking out. Yeah. And so um, you know one of the things that I take away from it is learning a little bit about myself. Mm-hmm. And about how we do things. And if I can make those jumps, if I can learn that lesson, then I'm not destined to repeat the failure. True. And I think one thing that's important, too, I, I mean, you're absolutely right about learning. You have to learn from your mistakes. Otherwise, you're just doomed to repeat the past. But I think the thing is is that you have to not be scared uh, from that previous failure, mm-hmm. you know, it, we've we've tried to do projects and things, and we get to the point where we go, oh well, you know, but we did we tried this three years ago and it didn't work. Well, maybe it's a different realm right. than it was three years ago. Right. So, I think it's important to take that into consideration when it comes to 
failure or compensating for failure or coming back from failure. Don't don't always necessarily base now on the past. Well, timing timing is a definite component of success or failure. Sure. I mean, if you if you have the right product but the wrong timing, it's not going to work. I mean, I, I was um, listening to a, po- well, what, a podcast. It was TED Talk from Simon Sinek, you know, and he was talking about TiVo. You know, TiVo is the greatest product known to mankind, if you really think about it. You know, it, we even use TiVo as a verb. Yeah, I, you just know, TiVo it. I, just TiVo it. Mm-hmm. But how many of us actually have TiVo <laughs> at the house? None of us do. You know, even though it was a great product and all, the timing was wrong. The, mm-hmm. the marketing was wrong. And so as a product, TiVo could be considered a failure. Yeah. But at the same time, it ushered in DVRing to the entire world. And so, you know, you look at it and say, well, what could they have done differently? Well, you know, I'm sure some of it could be handled with the way they marketed themselves, you know, right. et cetera. But that's what that's the lesson that can be taken away is, look, it's not always the product's fault. True. And, and sometimes we want to we want to throw that baby out. Sometimes it's, it is a timing issue. I, I've told the story about when we tried to do website development in the early 90s. Mm-hmm. And people didn't even have email, email addresses, much less put right. on a website. We, we had the right still, talent, but the, right, the timing was all wrong. We were all still at Hotmail, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> at Hotmail. I still have a Hotmail account. I do, too. I, I've never I do I haven't checked it in It's like in where eons. email addresses go to die. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but but that's, that's what we've got to learn from it is that sometimes that failure – and is not, you know, it, it could be timing. It could mm-hmm. be effort. I, I've seen great products that, that failed for a lack of effort. Yeah. And I think sometimes, too, failure is about you need to get to failure. You need to get to it quickly. I mean, isn't that the lean concept we've all been hearing about for the last five years? Uh, you know, fail and fail quickly so that you can get to the thing that isn't going to fail. Right. And and how do you know? I mean, I think so many of us are, it's either pee or get off the pot when it comes mm-hmm. to trying something new. And uh, the the mentality now, things move so quickly and, and it, you're encouraged to just give it a shot. And if, you, if you're not investing so much on the front end, then it's not that big of a loss. I, I'm reminded of the story of um, Thomas Edison who uh, when he was trying to find the right filament to make the light bulb work oh yeah he failed literally tens of thousands of times mm-hmm. as a matter of fact he would try the he li- he worked in a second story building and he would try uh, a filament and when it would burn out he would throw the the, the glass bulb out the window <laughs> now the story goes is that by the time he found the right one the the pile of glass had reached that second story window yikes you know and and somebody asked him you know you failed you know countless thousands of times you know how did you overcome that failure and he said i didn't see it as failure i I saw it as another way to not make a light bulb right and i think a lot of us it's so much easier now to fail and i don't mean it from a standpoint of you're more apt to fail but a lot of products a lot of things that are considered business today have very little capital buy-in so you can fail and not sink the ship right and you can try things, and it won't. And if it doesn't work out, you can you can move on to something else, and and still do it. But it's it's the film to digital analogy. It's a great and boy, I don't often get to use analogies related <laughs> to my industry, so I just want to give God a good shout out right now for this. But yeah, I mean, when we were all film shooters, man, you were careful about that shot. Oh. Now digital, oh my God, you can delete until the cows come home. It mm. makes absolutely no difference. You're not going to wear the CF card out. No, so no, no, go no. for it, man. I remember shooting sports photography on film and. Ugh. Yeah, you know, God. Yeah, you know, if the if the boss wanted to splurge, you got a thirty six exposure roll. But you were pretty much set. You know, I, for a football game, I had twelve exposures in the yeah. first half and, and and twelve exposures in the back. It's honey, half. if that doesn't frame your composition, I don't know what does. <laughs> and so yeah, it, it's true though. Um, Burn it up, man. Oh, and there was nothing nothing more disheartening than getting back and figure out that your exposure was set wrong. Yikes. Or or, 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 the, or you had the little trail of motion blur because mm-hmm. it was a little bit, you know, closer to nighttime. Yeah. But you had to, you know, go with it, right? Yeah. There, you know, you didn't have a second chance. Mm-hmm. You, and you certainly didn't have 2,000 exposures to pick the right no. one. You know, photography, you know, with, uh, with autofocus and all. Now not taking anything away from your profession yeah, at all does it fella but but the chances of coming back with a good shot are, are pretty are good pretty good now pretty good. <laughs> pretty good pretty good so and i think about those failures that, that that i had in business almost make me gun shy to try something new sure 
you know, we, we, we've been talking about other publications that, that we'd like to start as a part of our business because that's our wheelhouse. That's what we know. We know that we can do excellent Dude, work in there. I'm excited about you starting new publications. It's, it's going to be really, really cool. I've got five ideas right now. <laughs> <laughs> She can spend our money just really well. Yeah. I sure can. Uh, <laughs> you in, betcha. Uh, tune in in a few weeks. Yeah, yeah for, the, for the new. About, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I love but it. at the same time, you know, we we look at the at the um, you know the reports of the death of print. Yes. <laughs> and we're like, do we death want of it? Prince? Prince died. Oh my <laughs> God! Red alert. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I checked out. What happened? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm Raspberry sleeping. beret. What? Yeah. <laughs> And I didn't hear you. I was thinking of something else. <laughs> Dear day, beloved, we are gathered here. Oh, good lord! Oh. Man, my Sorry. husband might start dancing when he hears this uh, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Prince. <laughs> the artist currently known as Cur- Prince. Kurt still currently yeah. known as Prince. <laughs> so but something about Print dying. What? What's yeah. that Prince again? Is, Prince what's is that gone? Again? What? You know what? Print may be dying, but it ain't dead with me. No, I love to hold a magazine and a new. Paper. Well, and that's what we what we're talking about. Um, group of us that are that are thinking about some of these publications, we start looking at okay, okay, maybe the mass version of print, yeah, is is, is kind of going away because you can't be all things to all people, right? But the niche version of print, the connoisseur, of yes, print. yes, is still still pretty vibrant. Let's elevate the experience. That's right, Fancy premium word. baby. Ooh, elevate the experience. I can't spell it, but I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> I is an artist if I've ever heard one. <laughs> That voice makes its way into just about every podcast we do. I know, I'm well, it's because we're, we're from the south. Oh, we're gonna blame oh, everything oh, are from we the like, south. We're not just weird. It's just the it's our locale that changes. Like so we're relatable now. Is that like, what no, it's like perhaps we're hits, related because you know. we're from the south. <laughs> Everybody's related. God, uh, what were we talking about? I don't Failure, know. Failure, <laughs> which is pretty much the example of this podcast. Example yeah. A. <laughs> Failures and whatnot. Learn the lesson. Yeah. That's yeah. the first thing. Don't get gun shy. Mm-mm, don't be scared. Fail your way to success. Don't be scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> you got to jump in, man. You know, uh, to use to use a uh, a example that that would resonate with with my uh, young uh, uh, connoisseur of all things comic. Yes. Marvel failed Mr. miserably until they created the MCU or the Marvel Cinematic well, Universe. Yeah. We can get into semantics, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, they they sold off all of their best yeah, characters. They went, they almost went bankrupt, and then they figured out a way to make their movies work. And Dude, that's what, what it's are. all about, man. Uh, keep trying until you, mm-hmm. until it, until it works, and but don't. I don't want to do the insanity thing, which mm. is you know it's doing trying the same thing over and over again, right, expecting a different right. result. You've got to adjust something. You've got to to change either your timing, your effort, your product, whatever it is. Yeah. Be willing to change that thing before you you go try again. You know, just like, you know, let's talk about print. You know, let's say we launch a publication and it fails miserably because it's it's analog. Mm-hmm. You know, the content may be great. The saleability may be great. It may just be the wrong type of product, and you could revamp and go digital with it, or vice versa. You know, if you're in a, if you're in a community that's not real digital heavy, and you launch out with a digital news Web product only. website, yeah. right. and it fails miserably, maybe you need to back off and say, you know what, let's go a more traditional route on this bad boy. Yeah. That, I think that's the willingness. The willingness to, change, to, to learn and to change so that the, if you fail next time, it's not for the same reason. Right. Right. I think I think that's the the really important part. You know. Yeah, it's crucial. Yeah, because there's you. It's it's the world is a giant, you know, pitfall where any number of things can to can sink you. So mm-hmm. yeah, maybe it's not timing this time. Maybe it's just performance. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not performance. Maybe it's or distraction. Audience. Oh yeah. my And gosh. that's why I think a team is so important because um, you may not know the answer to that question. You may not know why something failed, but if you've got a team working around you, chances are the 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 um, aggregate knowledge in the room is going to be able to pinpoint where the weaknesses were and and move in an, in an opposite direction. And your team needs to have the freedom to speak freely. Yeah. Because there's nothing worse than getting in there with the boss and says, why did this fail? And it's the boss's I don't know. It was baby. Bob's fault. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? It was definitely you know, I, fault. You know, I had, Turn I had, to your right and grab the nearest person to you <laughs> and throw them under the bus. Yes. Yeah. Because, and, and I didn't think of it like that until I had, until we had that biz breakfast when, when Anton was there. And I said, you know, yeah, I had everybody over to my house for a planning session. And, oh, and yeah. To work out the problem. And he's like, I'd be scared to death. I'd think people. 
strips yeah. are coming. Anton and I, <laughs> definitely, he honed in right yeah. on the key. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, don't nobody want to be called to the boss's house. But you it know? wasn't that kind of meeting No, for it you. wasn't. Yeah, and, that's, and so, that says something. But, but that was the culture we had built was yeah. that that we can have these meetings and then everybody's not getting fired. That tells you what kind of meetings Anton's been in. <laughs> yeah. Bless his heart. We love you, Anton. <laughs> but really and truly, if you're going to fail, well, you're going to fail. Yeah, let's, let's, you're let's, absolutely let's, let's make gonna that fail. when you that, fail. Yeah, so when you fail, eventually, you need to, to be able to learn from it and not do the same thing again, right. but also not be gun shy. Right. Because that, that, you know, we all fell off the bike the first time we got on. Sure. And, many, and until until we gain times. that balance, you know, I, I probably have scars today from the mm-hmm. number of times I've fallen off bikes, even as an adult. But we live in remarkable times where you can recover from failure very quickly, as long as you have your mental game in place. Mm-hmm. The only thing that will hold you back, I think, is the mental game. It is. It is. Because anybody who's wanting to get something done and is passionate about it and yes. can show a marketability for it, yeah. they can get the money yeah. to do it. Yeah. Or, or or the buy-in is so low they can finance it themselves. Right. You know? mm-hmm. I still go back to it's anybody can launch a website. Yeah. For next to nothing. Yeah. And so don't tell me you can't you can't do an e-commerce business. Don't tell me you can't start a blog. Don't tell me you can't do these things because the buy-in is so mm-hmm. so low. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's what you know. We we talked about Fiverr. I mean, you can get professional work done at a very low price. Yeah. So. Learn from it and don't be gun shy. Don't use failure as an excuse. Absolutely. And so we're running out of time. We're going to go ahead and shift to the biz tool of the week. The biz tool of the week. Leaders are readers. Readers are leaders. That's we right. heard all that cr- stuff. St- stuff. Stuff. Crap. <laughs> but I. Crap. I have learned something in the last year. Last year I got my eyes done. Can you tell? I'm so pretty now. Oh, no. Wow. I, what I got done was I have bifocal eyes. Oh. So I have one eye that's for close and one eye that's for far away. You're like the bionic man. Well, yeah. Yeah, except. What a time to be alive. <sighs> <laughs> Anyhow, back on the rails. I love it. I'm having a hard time reading books. Really? Because my eyes get tired faster. Because that one eye is doing all the work when it's close to me. Okay, that makes sense. And so it's like it'll start burning. And even though I'm not tired physically, my eyes are just war slap out. Plus, I'm ADD. You know, it's like if I'm reading an e-book, all of a sudden your Facebook will go bing. And you're like, oh, I'll go, go check this. Yeah, anyway. Do not disturb. Do That's not what disturb. it's all about. So I started using Audible. Yeah. For audiobooks. Man, I love it so much. And I have found that I can consume more books on my commute. Yes. Using Audible. And you've got a great commute for that. Yes, I got You're, 30 got minutes. You've got about a 30-minute commute, so yeah. So it gets me through a few chapters. Yes. On the way in. Actually, this morning I was up at 4.30. I had to run here, back to home, back to here. Wow. And so I, I got through several chapters of the book, uh, Essentialism. Oh, yeah, yeah. A great book, by the yeah. way. And. I really say, and I love the books that are read by the author because yeah. they have the passion oh, behind definitely. it, the inflection that you know they know their stuff. They're the best reader for sure. But I, I have been able to consume more content through through that. Now, again, for some people, and I get it, listening to an audio book is like wah 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 oh, wah, man, wah, not wah, me. wah But but for me, I'm I'm able to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that I have to concentrate a little harder because my mind can like go off on a tangent. Oh yeah, I find myself rewinding. A yeah, little bit. yeah. <laughs> Depending on how distracted I am. Right. But I'll, I'll say too, David, it's not just about your commute. It can be about that thirty minutes here. You may, I'm not, but you may be doing on the treadmill. That would you be know, Sean the thirty minutes on the treadmill. That's a great time to um, to plug in an Audible. Um, you mm-hmm. know, anytime you find yourself waiting for an appointment or something, it's right there on your phone. Just plug in your little headphones and you're good to go. And and I read, you know, I was an English major back in another life, and so I so many, so so many, with cat-like reflexes, and I used to read. (laughs) 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 I'm glad we have the YouTube now to show that. Uh, Oh Lord, we've lost them. (laughs) Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) But no, it's great because it it has brought reading back to my life. So I read not just for um, for business tutorials and so forth, and just keeping myself plugged in professionally but i love to read for pleasure and this is a great way to do it cool i don't read so (laughs) thanks for listening to this week's biz tools podcast we will see you next time later bye got questions post them in the comment section of the show notes we'll answer them find out more at thebiztools.com slash the podcast
Until next time, applied knowledge is power.